I realize I do the millennial pause. I'm like trying not to do it, but I definitely did it. So I'm supposed to just press it and just like start talking. <laughs> hey y'all, it's Dark Sugar Podcast. I just realized that I did that. Like when we take, okay. I was just supposed to immediately start talking when I press the button. How are you guys today? It is Monday. It has been a time. I can hear my dog on the other side of my door. Is she going to do something? Do I have to let her in? You guys that have kids probably have the same experience. I know, I know. Pets aren't like kids, but okay, I think we're fine. But it is Monday. I have some thoughts. I have some notes. I haven't been taking notes um, like I normally do, and I've noticed that my episodes feel a little choppy so i took some notes today i hope you guys are doing well the climate (laughs) the literal and social climate i'm in phoenix as a lot of you guys know it is 10 it's not too hot today it's 106 look at me it's not too hot 106 but a couple days ago it's been 110 118 115 crazy shit so actually 106 like and when i tell you my room is completely dark right now i have blackout curtains it's i'm just i'm feeling like i'm in hermit mode recently but again the physical climate outside the social climate um trump just announced his vp today um biden's um slowly withering away it's just a mess um so I want to talk about it all today. I want to do a check-in with you guys, let you know how I've been doing, give you some updates, tell you some things that I've been learning and researching, and also touch on more of the political side. I normally don't go in. I have on some episodes, but I normally stay away from it. But honestly, I've been having some really good convers, very good conversations with people on both sides. Um, And when I say both sides, I don't mean like, actual both sides i mean people who maybe are republican but they recognize that there's some fuck shit going on you know um and they're able to admit that with me so i've been having all those good conversations and i've been just wanting to share it all with y'all um now as far as the check-in i'm calling it villain era these memes that i see they get on my nerves but they're so true where it's like um it'll say like a pisces villain era or a people pleasers villain era like something hurtful but it'll just say i'll just say pisces it'll be like a pisces villain era is them just standing up for themselves or a recovering people pleaser or a people pleaser or an empath or whoever and i always i i kind of want to bounce off that and talk about villain origin stories um because as someone who i consider myself to be highly empathic like we have a spectrum many spectrums you know of a lot of things and there is an empathy spectrum that is talked about in psychology very often and as an empath someone who identifies as an empath i am on the hyper end of empathy and those who have sociopathic or let me not say sociopathic because that's not a clinical term those who have um psychopathic or narcissistic tendencies they are usually on the um hypo end where they lack um empathy on some range so first as someone who's hyper empathetic i've noticed that i really get in situations where i identify with the villain's origin story so hard that i get in the cross <laughs> fire of of you know their treachery when i say treachery i just mean you know whatever that person may be going through or how they're um projecting or amplifying their trauma or negativity into the world and that happens to be um that happens to make you me targets those who identify with this you become a target um, especially when you're so empathetic and um, your empathy is going all to this person and none is going to yourself. And I kind of want to talk about my villain origin story just because I've been like really, really trying to detach from people's origin stories. Right. Um, 
and if you've ever been in an abusive relationship a narcissistic relationship a one-sided relationship at some point you may be recognized okay i'm giving a little too much of a fuck and that always hurts that never feels good you do i never i always hate when i have to come to that realization and i have to take a lot of accountability there because usually my empathy scale is just so high i am hyper functioning with my empathy usually um some sort of trauma wound is being hit at the same time and all my empathy is being just given to someone who it really shouldn't be going towards and i'm not saying they don't deserve it it's just it should be going to yourself it should have been going to me especially when you know it's so uneven but i'm really recognizing where it's like okay yes this person had a crazy childhood a hurtful childhood they've been through this their parents that da 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 but am i going to one let them weaponize that against me which i realized that that was happening i didn't know that people did that y'all like i was so naive i didn't know that people (laughs) i didn't know that people did that and i'm like wow no wonder they brought up their childhood so much like a lot of these relationships that i had to let go of i look back and i realize this person was talking about their childhood like a lot and they usually talked about it when (laughs) like coincidentally when they were doing something manipulative trying to hide something or 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 they're just really swimming in their trauma because the hurt people hurt people i literally hate hearing that fuck that i hate that saying but i say that to say that a lot of abusive people are highly traumatized and that doesn't excuse it but I think people need to merge the two. I see a lot of this um, on mental health platforms where people are like, it's a choice. They choose to be abusive. At some point, you just make a choice. And I understand that, yes, I have seen people with BPD, and PD, personality disorders, to really toxic behavior, whatever. I've seen them go to therapy and, and really try and get better. People close to me have done this. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and dismiss all of the symptoms of these toxic behaviors that ricochet, that make it that 10 times harder for them to get help. You know, I don't know how to I don't know how to explain it, but I had to separate. But I'm saying that to say I had to separate the story from myself and say hey you know i i see that is the reason that you are the way you are um because when you do look at people like i said when you do look at people that have these toxic behaviors it's like i don't want to throw out statistics i'm not that girl but like eight times out of ten nine times like eight times out of ten seven times out of ten whatever more than six times out of ten (laughs) they've been through some shit or it's like literally like some brain wiring or both um, so I'm not going to negate that, but you're not going to use it. That's where I'm saying where they usually they use it as an excuse. That's your choice. That's what you're doing. That's what I'm not going to accept anymore. And I'm learning not to accept it for myself either, because I re- I was putting it. I was putting up with it from other people because I realized I was doing it in my own way, saying, well, you know, my childhood is like this. So that's why I'm like this. And I realized I was saying that a little too time, a little too many times in my head for my liking. Um, and I kind of had to, exp- that's where I kind of had to explore, wait, what is my villain <laughs> origin story? Like, why am I, hold on, because, you know, we tell our childhood stories a lot. You'll meet people, your partners, your friends, you know, the fuck shit that they went through their in their childhood. But as someone who can tell my childhood story i realized that i was very emotionally detached from it and the older i get and the more i'm learning about myself the more i'm learning about mental health the more i'm learning about people around me i recognize that i didn't fully i hadn't fully wrapped my head or my heart around my story so i knew that my parents okay so for one (sighs) 
both my parents mental illnesses may make them disabled and I knew that but now that I'm 29 years old I'm like wait my parents were disabled like mentally disabled like wait what and I do remember my mom saying like yeah when you went to high school I got off a disability to start working to send you to a private school and I'm like wait you got off a disability like wait no wonder you were struggling at work like wait if you had a dis if you had war grade ptsd like hold on you weren't even supposed to be working and wait and oh my god like it just really hit me how intense my situation was and i really had to grieve that part of myself because a lot of the times the people in my life had no idea i hadn't let myself process it i had put myself on the back burner so many times that I didn't have a story to tell. I didn't have a story. And so now my story is like really coming together. Your parents were mentally disabled, raising you. Your mom had war grade PTSD, so she gave you war grade PTSD. The psychiatrist that did my PTSD test, I love her and she actually apologized to me because her reaction to my score on my PTSD test was, I mean, normally it would have been inappropriate because she was so shocked. And she was like, whoa, what did you go through? And then she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. She's like, it's just really high. And I'm like wait what and your ptsd score is in flux like if you have ptsd it's higher some days than others but the fact that she was like this is war grade i'm like war grade i've never even been out of the country war grade like i've never even had a gun to my head war grade and <clears throat> to think that my mom having ptsd really made me abandon myself and fuse with her because i knew that in order for me to be okay she had to be okay and that was just the ingrained subconscious narrative in my head in order for me to be okay you have to be okay and i learned how to mo emotionally manipulate my mom and i didn't even recognize that it, i was being emotionally manipulative until recently and I would cry. I would cry. And when I would cry, that's when my mom would pay attention to me. And rarely was I really making myself cry, but normally when I would be crying, I'd just exaggerate my cry. I'd make it really, really big. Like a baby, kind of. Ah! Like I'd make it like really desperate. And I'd just kind of let myself go and just like, cry even as like a 14 13 year old i just cry when it would get really bad i wouldn't do it all the time but when it would get really bad our fights would get really bad the screaming the whatever the name calling and she would just stop and look at me and she would go oh and that's when she would kind of realize that what i was what she was doing was hurtful and when i see people who are manipulative in their own way i recognize that that's how they learned how to get what they needed to get and it's really so messed up and i wish our country would not glorify people doing whatever it took to get what they want to get because now we have a cult we have fed a culture of people doing whatever it takes and yes, I was a little kid, but now I'm having to unlearn that on a social level because we live in the United States where you're taught to whatever the fuck it takes. And on some level, yes, strive, don't give up. But there are people out there, y'all, that are taking that on a whole nother, they're taking it the other way. And that's their origin story. That's their villain origin story. And I had to realize, and God, thankfully, and I've said this before, he put people in my life that acted just like I did, like a little turnt up, 
to show me what I was doing. He's given me people pleasers as friends. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, is that what it feels like? You know? And I just have to give myself some grace and I give the people around me grace. It's really hard for me to do a smear campaign against people. All the people that I let go of, I have this kind of like, it's really hard for me to do a complete like smear campaign and go just drag them through the mud and just destroy their character because i have so much grace for myself and it's like i don't have to let you in my life i don't have to hate you but i really do give them a lot of grace because i see the loop that people are in i see the ricochet and mine was the not being good enough mine was and it's like a lot of subconscious narratives i feel like people think oh you just have one subconscious narrative no you might have a few mine was not being good enough not being important fear of being abandoned like it was just all i mean the root was fear of abandonment but it was just a whole bunch of things that were being triggered at once um and uh yeah so i give everybody grace that are sorting out their origin story and and sorting out the origin story of the people around them because honestly i'm using my ability to understand people to my advantage um, instead of because uh, i'm like empathy is such a hard thing i can see so much in people so and so because i normally pretend i don't see it because i'm like if i do see it it hurts but I'm trying to realize it doesn't have to hurt. I can be loving and accepting and just figure out how to move. It doesn't have to hurt. I, I need to just see it for what it is. And see myself for who I am. And this summer, I feel like <laughs> I'm having like my fifth ego death. And I feel really bad <laughs> for like everyone involved. <laughs> because I just feel like very emotional and... I feel really dramatic and like kind of just turn up on another like I just feel like why you know why is she so hype I don't know I just I've been releasing a lot y'all it's my Saturn return I feel so cliche it's my Saturn return no uh, it's like but for real it's like my Saturn return (laughs) and it's not kicking my ass I want I I feel like I should be saying it's kicking my ass but it's not I feel like I'm taking the lessons in and I'm just like, okay, I got you. I'm not, okay, I got it. Like, (sighs) but ego death, ego death. Ego, what is the ego? We have such the, I wish they, I wish now in the midst of all this um, political stuff, I wish somebody could do a PSA on what the definition of ego is because and i don't mean to sound pretentious when i say that i just feel like now that i understand what ego means now when i am in conversation it's some it's one of those things you know everyone has their thing that annoys them but it they understand it's only because you've studied that or you you know what i'm trying to say ego death what is your ego um ego is a part of your psyche that protects you um we all have an ego um some people are like oh i don't have an ego or i don't you know i don't have a big ego you can have a big ego or a small ego but the key is to have a stable ego your ego should actually be in the middle um i give this example so let's say and this is an ex two wait (laughs) sorry i was thinking five thoughts at once this is an example (laughs) of a big and small ego so a big ego this is an example so let's say we have a doctor with a big ego he's a world-renowned doctor he's very well known super gifted and um he's had a, a lot of breakthroughs in medical technology whatever whatever so let's say there's this conference every year where all these doctors come together come together and they display all the latest research in the medical field technology whatever so because this doctor has a big ego, um, he goes because he's going to be recognized, but he really doesn't give a shit about listening to what anybody has to say about anything there because in his head, he's thinking, 
I'm the most re- world renowned. I just won an award. Fuck what you got to say. All these other doctors here. Who are you? Whatever. So during these meetings, he's very arrogant. He's cutting people off. He's not really listening. Let's say he barely, let's say he misses a lot of the meetings because he thinks, eh, like, whatever. I don't need to, like, whatever. I don't need to listen. So then let's say if we do consequence let's say we go further and we talk consequences this doctor goes on performs a surgery months later because he didn't go to some of these um, meetings during this conference he missed out on some of the technology briefings that were needed during this surgery blah 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 blah, blah. he botched it okay example of someone having a big big ego take that same doctor let's say they have a small ego Let's say still they are world renowned um bunch of awards, highly recognized, but they have a small ego. They actually this doctor doesn't think he's worth these awards. So um he actually is struggling to decide to go to this fucking conference that he's going to be recognized at. He doesn't want to go. He's really nervous. He has cold feet. He books at the last second because he wasn't really sure in the first place. He gets there. He's depressed. He's having a bad time. He's isolating himself. He's not really talking to people. Um, He doesn't really do a great speech because he didn't really think he deserved it. So people are talking and things are getting weird and they're wondering what's up with him these comments are making him feel more insecure so he hides himself does not go to several of the functions blah 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 let's say the same consequence happens now you could say that someone with a big ego could still be successful and there are big ego successful doctors but i'm just giving an example of somebody with a big and small ego you could remove the consequence but just an example um but your ego should actually be stable so a doctor with a stable ego everything happens they attend the conference um they give their speech they recognize their inspirations there the inspirations that they recognize during their speech happen to be there give them more networking connections because they said their name introduce them to more people because this person has a stable ego they actually attend the conference and go to other people's lectures and learn to mingle and they're more open they ask questions they want younger doctors coming in to challenge their work even disprove some of it if they want they actually take people under their wing and now they're a mentor because they have a stable ego and they recognize that the next generation um coming up they're the future and they want him them to be better than him okay see so those are the examples but we all have egos we all need an ego so when they say ego death it's kind of a misnomer because your ego doesn't die but during an ego death your ego is reconstructed so there is a death of sorts but then your ego is resurrected or i'd say it um comes back together but it doesn't it's not like it dies and it's gone but um usually uh i my definition of ego death you can look up different ones but i'd consolidate it by saying it is when something that was protecting your ego is suddenly challenged or disproved or released um so my first ego death happened in 20 wait was it 2020 or was it 2021 hold on let me think i think it was 2020 um but when it happened i guess my first subconscious narrative that was like dissolved was the fact that i actually wasn't being nice (laughs) when i was like hanging out with people 24 7 and being a people pleaser i was being nice in the hopes of being wanted and needed and that was like one of my subconscious things i was doing to people and i really did and to myself and i had no idea i didn't even know that i was people pleasing so when i found out that i was people pleasing and when i found out that a lot of my relationships were not fulfilling 
because I wasn't truly being myself in them and the people that I was, you know, it was just not aligned and unhealthy. I actually had a mental break. <laughs> I had a full on breakdown and it lasted like a week and a half. I was so fucking depressed. Um, and coincidentally, sorry, let me drink some coffee. Hold on. I wish I had more sugar. Oh my God. And coincidentally, I was alone during this whole week. I mean, thank God. But it was a really trying time. I needed it though because it helped me realize um, that I wasn't being my authentic self. It made me realize that I wasn't being as accepting or perfect as I thought to the people around me and that I had shadow traits as well. Like, I didn't know that. I'm not, I'm not saying I was like being malicious um, or tactful, but I just didn't know that I was being hurtful too. I'm thinking that, oh, I'm the victim, no accountability. But then I realized, no, Kiana, you're not, you're, you're not being yourself but it's not that i wasn't being myself because i do have to recognize that in toxic relationships you just can't fucking be yourself you just can't that's why guys i'm kind of getting sick of and i think i talked about this in a couple episodes prior but i'm really who reading mental health um uh posts and memes are really hard sometimes when they're general and they don't apply to toxic situations and i'm not saying all mental health memes need to apply to toxic situations because i realized i don't want to be that annoying person that's like wait but you're not thinking about but because sometimes you can read something and tell that it doesn't apply to you you know (laughs) like and i feel like that's a lot of people's problem commenting on the internet they don't realize that they're not fucking talking to you so you don't need to comment and say well what about no we're not talking about that um but i do have to say that i was applying a lot of things i was going through to my toxic situation when they didn't apply so in toxic situations you usually can't be yourself but it's your job to recognize hey i'm masking right now or hey my people pleasing radar just turned on for some reason because mine just turns on because i'm an empath it will just turn on and i have to realize that when it turns on something's wrong when i start people pleasing it's because i picked up something in the air that just told me you need to be safe and you need to act this way that's how quick it, it that's how quick of a survival mechanism it is for me so I've been giving myself a lot of grace and my and my uh uh reaction time is going down <laughs> because I'm now realizing when I do it I can feel it I'm like oh you're acting weird you're masking you're you're doing you're at, you're not being yourself right now why and now instead of just continuing to engage which is my accountability now I'm like mm mm like something's not <laughs> right something's off you know so i that was kind of like my first ego death experience now this current one which i'm calling like my fifth one and i'm calling it my fifth one to like try to be funny but i really do think it's like my fifth one um this one is on repressed emotions and anger as someone who really struggles with emotions and i as a society emotions are not really our thing i really do commend everybody um and in the world and i really do mean everyone in the world who has been taking any type of step towards mental health whether that's your own your kids your parents at your job pushing initiatives uh politically like whatever because it's saving lives um for real for (laughs) for real for real because um we we we've been running away from it for way too long and i've been running away from mine for way too long and i see that cycle every ego death that comes up new new things that come up that are repressed for me and with anger 
as a society we struggle with anger among a lot of other emotions and i really like the memes and the the posts i've been seeing about anger on social media describing anger as a multifaceted emotion it's not just and and i really do see that in my loved ones and my friends past and present friends their anger is so layered and as an empath i could really feel it and see it and taste it and smell it and and my own anger that's been coming up it's been hard because i'm just like where does it go um i repress a lot as a coping mechanism i feel like my emotional bandwidth as of late has been really short because i am new to my own emotions i feel like um they're just big and scary the emotions and i remember my therapist uh not this one like a a past one she said your emotions can't hurt you and i was like ew like who told you that because mine hurt me all the time like emotions for me feel very painful like physical pain um so anger feels very very painful for me especially because of my experience with anger growing up I just never really saw it as a healthy thing and I never understood it. But now that I'm older, I think anger is super healthy. And I think there are a lot of different ways to express it. And I'm understanding what's my way. So this round of ego death is saying that anger is healthy to re- to express and that I'm worth being angry for. Um because i didn't know growing up that my mom's anger was for me even though a lot of times it did feel toward me it was for me and i didn't understand that and so i was kind of like oh i was worth being angry for and i kind of just had to take that and feel that in like my solar (laughs) plexus and really just feel that feminine anger as mother for her child feeling abandoned you know as a family unit and remove it toward me and go whoa that was for me and i know that sounds like i was just like tripping on something when when i just said that but i'm i'm having a healthy relationship with anger and i'm not repressing anything anymore and also this ego death is getting me back in touch with my intuition because y'all i know i know what's going on i don't even know why i go to therapy sometimes i'm like bitch you know like why are you why are you playing with yourself and i'm playing with myself because i have like a script in my head of like how things are supposed to go and whatever is not going that way i'll try to delete it but the isolation that i've had in the hermit mode that the universe has kind of brought me i have a lot of clarity about myself and about the people around me and the clarity i have about myself was really painful like recognizing your own shadow is painful recognizing your own downfalls are painful and I recognized how my abandonment wound was playing out so hard in my relationships and how I was idealizing people and hurting them by idealizing them. Like when you idealize people, it hurts your relationship. It doesn't just, it's not just a you thing. Like, oh, I just, I was just expecting more from them. Like, no, it, it like toxic or not, it just hurts the relationship. It just really does. So like if you're in a toxic relationship and you're idealizing that person you will never let go and then if you're in a healthy relationship and you're idealizing it'll make it stressful and you'll just be constantly disappointed and then the other person will just be frustrated because they they're not going to understand why you're constantly upset or why you're resentful or why you're passive aggressive or why they feel like now they're always failing you like it's just not good and i was realize i realized i was doing that and that's just a reflection on me and i don't want to get into that (laughs) because i'm not ready 
but I had to realize that it was a reflection on me and where I'm at and what I did not want to accept about I don't know y'all like I read something that said that Pisces this is our year of like coming up for air and like coming out of our fantasy land and dissociation is real living in your fantasies is real (laughs) and it can be kind of painful when you come up to the surface but my ego death has been um just facing has been like a right reality and that's what saturn's all about just wake up call see shit how it really is like it's like a span like a parent giving you a spanking kind of or like being in detention and like having to write something 10 times i don't know i got it though that's why it's like i don't want to say like saturn returns kicking my butt because all these breakdowns i feel really calm inside i'm like no it's good i got it and it's just making me feel more human because holding on to perfectionism is really hurtful it really hurts yourself it's just like you're hitting yourself over the head and so realizing it seeing my little quirk seeing the things that i'm just like hey that's just you you can just that's just something about you that you know and then also i'm not a project there's just some things about me and it just is what it is and i'm not saying that in a toxic way some some shit is just like that's just me and i don't actually i don't have to really like fix that is that something to be aware of sure but we all know that one friend that like their little quirk is actually the thing that like makes us like hanging out with them um so i don't know i'm just learning to accept myself i guess this ego death acceptance stop fighting with myself oh what's next enough about me oh wait i forgot a note well okay i'll say it um speaking of shadow to kind of go to go back about how i've been accepting my shadow i made a note about people um facing their shadows and why people don't face their shadows and what i realized recently is that when people don't face their shadow it's actually the most interesting thing i've noticed um they're trying to hide it but it kind of turns into like a peter pan scenario where those of you that remember peter pan or have seen it his shadow is like super separate from him and like does its own thing i noticed that when people ignore their shadow and they really repress and they act like they're perfect and you know they're very passive aggressive and they can do no wrong and they don't take accountability and they're always the victim their shadow become they think they're hiding it but it becomes like a separate it becomes very obvious and that's one thing that people don't know they think you have to like kill your shadow but you're actually supposed to integrate it within yourself um and that's the part of the ego death that i think is like the last phase is integration where you don't dismiss yourself you accept your whole self and pull your whole self back together like think of your favorite celebrity that's just like quirky and their whole vibe is just who they are and that's why you like them imagine if every day they were just like super hard on themselves like okay this is such a random example but imagine if sexy red was hard on herself every day about who she was when who she is it's why she's famous like who she is that's why people love her if she wasn't if she was if she was like megan the stallion i wouldn't like her because megan the stallion is megan the stallion i like her because she's sexy red and people can say what they want and people do say what they want about her and they people have said really mean derogatory hateful anti-black trying to be pro-black whatever things about her um and she's making money like while i'm talking right now you know so at some point there just has to be a level of integration where i say all of this is me quirks and all constant work in progress i'm not going to be hard on myself 
and just take it all in like for example this is a long episode whatever so for example i went out the other night and i went to a pool party and social anxiety is something that i've struggled with on and off it's not consistent i'd say it's seasonal there's maybe like for a couple months i feel fine going out and then next like two months i just am terrified all of a sudden i don't know but i went to a pool party and it's the first time i've been out in a f- like an- with a lot of people like in a few months um and i was kind of nervous uh well actually i just lied i just lied oh no 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 okay i was like fake nervous like right when i got there i was kind of like don't know anybody but i immediately was like oh hey my name's kiana hi okay who owns the house hey la 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 and i just didn't put any pressure on myself and you know my friends wanted to go and start playing games and i was hot and i wanted to get in the pool so i broke off like pretty soon got in the pool i don't know nobody in the pool but i'm sitting in the pool i'm looking at the stars chilling then people come over we start talking like i literally was just mingling and moving around the space but there were some moments where i was just processing (laughs) like having some weird processing adhd moment in the corner of the pool looking at the stars and i didn't care that i was just chilling by myself in my thoughts and i felt so comfortable and i felt like i was having great conversation and people were coming up to me and i felt like it was this balance of me being myself and allowing people to be themselves and that's where i can segue into i was talking to people about the trump situation because he had just gotten shot now okay project 2025 i feel like just this depressed vibe in the air um like i said trump picked his vp today who is it i'm just so like (laughs) oh what's his name though for real i just had it but yeah that assassination attempt was wild okay jd vance who i guess was a critic i don't know that much about him i meant to watch a video before this but i need to after don't know who that is i think but hey at the pool party this is what i'm saying i was having an amazing convert i was having really good conversations um as someone who like leans democrat as of right now i've been very critical of both parties and that's been i think the past four or five years do i recognize that to me uh, it's really hard because i do recognize that the democratic party is more concerned with social issues and the republicans are more concerned you know with the economy i wish it could be a better blend of both do i really care about foreign policy and nato right now not really i think a lot of americans are not really caring about that either um i think moreover we are are concerned with the fact that our political our politics are very it's just very staged as a whole and i'm not saying that the shooting was staged yesterday i don't even think it is but i'm saying as a whole like things are tactful things are planned there's a lot of deception we're being gaslit poc are being gaslit as a as a whole we're being gaslit about democracy like these people really give a fuck like the founding fathers really gave a fuck like sorry let me stop um but i just want to say that i think people are reframing what it means to be democratic and what it means to be a citizen of this country and care about this country and we're understanding that i think us realizing all this should be uniting us more than ever but we can all feel the very strong division coming but i do have hope i do have hope that we can move away from being so individualistic and have more of a community i do hope that we can move away from the extremes and just 
be more tolerant of each other um because a lot of these social issues i'm not gonna say they're they're none of my business like i don't care but a lot of their these social issues i'm like very much to each their own and as far as this project 2025 that people you know we were talking the other day does it scare me no because it's what the P- republican party has been about it's what they're i mean it scares me that that's their end game but i kind of always knew that they want to ban abortion and they don't want us talking about race in school and i understand their extremes right i was talking about this with my friend last week um them saying they don't want critical race theory taught in school ah okay so the extreme the republican extreme on that is people saying like teaching kids that white people are the devil and white people are responsible slavery and that everybody's racist and their parents are racist and if they're white they're racist telling like a five-year-old you're racist like all of that to me is very inappropriate and should not be happening in a school setting especially with children under the age of like 12 13 now as someone who is a teacher myself what i do in school is i teach what racism is the definition how it affects all of us including white people how it is a very negative thing and how it affects us today i don't tell white kids in my class that they're evil if anything i'm checking (laughs) the white kids in my class i pulled them well we had only had two but i pulled them aside a lot of the times in the beginning of the year and i'm like are you okay are you okay with what i'm talking about and they're like miss blast like we're cool like we got you because they understood my tone i'd be kind of you know i'd be passionate and expressive but i'm not telling white kids you're racist and your whole family is racist and you're the problem and you're the and i think republicans look at that extreme and think that that's what this whole thing is and for educators like me who don't teach that way we teach the actual way that's really upsetting you know um so now to say it's going to be banned so i can't so wait i can't talk about it at all and they're saying that that's not what it is but it sounds like it um and as far as you know the other things uh what cutting social security or a lot of government social programs being cut like that's terrible but i don't know 22 the project thing that it didn't like make me shake in my boots because i kind of know that that's what that's what this republican party is trying to do now i know a lot of day-to-day republicans that don't agree with what trump is doing or saying um which is another thing that's disappointing because just like me i'm a democrat who thinks that i wish our parties just like really stood on business more and i mean that like they're not on their shit they say things and then don't do it and i'm kind of scared because i'm like okay if we do have a democratic president will they do what they say they're gonna do because if they don't then what's the point and people are scared and i just it just really scares me that we're gonna have a round two we could have a round two of either of these guys um but you know i'm glad that as a country we're doing a lot of research and that we're paying attention i feel like this is the most people have paid attention politically especially young people people my age in a really long time um and you could you know take that to anything tiktok social media or just the fact that people are finally waking up you know because on the one hand people are saying that trump would shake shit up in a good way which i guess i don't know because they say that him being him running the first time shook things up socially we start talking about race we start talking about this and that and i can see that point but to me i'm like well how damaging was that like was it worth the shake up i don't know and then 
you know, God bless Biden, but I'm not sure. I, I just wish, I hope, I just, I want him to be honest about what's going on. I don't know if it doesn't look like he's being honest. And so that's where I want people to see that this is not, this is not viva la revolucion. Like this is not that. This is, and our hearts, I feel like a lot of people's hearts are there. We want this big uprising and we're seeing that even these political figures that we like, like people like Obama, people like Bernie Sanders, even they can't like really give it to us like we want. And I think people are seeing that and recognizing that for the first time. And the way I teach it to my students is I show them what's happening on all sides politically. This is what this person is saying. This is what that person is saying. And I tell my students, you know, really sit on this. Go home. Ask your parents what they think and what they believe and why they believe that. Ask your family, like, are we Democrat? Like, you know, try to figure it out. Do your own research. And maybe, you know, you can't even vote now. So maybe don't even, like, form an opinion right now. I told my students, like, don't even pick right now. But really start to listen and wake up to what's going on. And kids are really smart right um and they know that something's up i remember one of my students asked me like wait miss is biden racist she was like is biden racist and i'm like probably and i don't mean that like in the like but i was telling her that racism is so like this whole structure is racist anyway so probably and he probably is and his tan oh my god i just got a flash of him in this tan whoever told biden to get a tan is just like that was such a no but it was because but but he was looking so pale so maybe it's a good thing um but yeah this vp he's so young that trump picked i don't know used to be a critic i'm not sure how to feel i gotta do some research but i'm just sad um america is a business it's all a scam especially looking at how much money we've been sending in foreign policy and biden already admitted that all this money is an investment for world war three which to me i'm like do y'all know something that we don't know it's just i hope we're all taking care of ourselves and just breathing there's a lot going on let's all center ourselves i haven't been seeing that much uproar on social media amongst my group that i like you know my inner circle on social media and i'm kind of glad because i feel like a lot of us i mean i'm not glad we're tapped out but i'm kind of glad because it social media can be overwhelming in general but to me it just shows how much people are like oh oh, he got oh they missed they tried to shoot him oh okay that's how it kind of felt to me yesterday i'm like we're not lo-. and a lot of people don't know they're like oh he got shot they shot at him really like and i'm like if this was some you know if they would have hit i know it would have been a bigger deal but i just thought it was funny i don't know not funny because someone died you know what i'm saying but anyway <sighs> that's my update let's all do some self-care even though it's hot outside, we got to get our 15, what's 15 minutes of sun a day? Drink water, journal like I'm about to do, do something creative. Love y'all. Bye.